I don't know where we live, but I'm very glad we don't live there. I don't know, Andy. Natural disasters are happening with less time between them and are becoming more and more catastrophic. Lives are being devastated and destroyed because we, as humans, refuse to take care of the one rock floating in space that keeps us all grounded and alive. We may count ourselves lucky that something didn't happen to or near us, but the ripple effects will eventually reach us in years, decades, even centuries. Are you seriously about to well actually me about a planet we both live on? Rawr! Kaboom! I've got a laser! I'm gonna throw this guy! Nom nom nom! Rawr! 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 Uh, your messaging is totally confused, but... Rawr! Rawr. I'm a laser! Rawr. I'm gonna destroy Rawr. you! Ow, my foot! Catch! Our world is being destroyed. Fossil fuels, deforestation, nuclear waste. Wait a minute, these are all problems we caused! Does that make us the enemy? Kind of. In Terror of Hemosaurus, you and up to three of your friends take on the role of giant monsters, hell-bent on destroying humanity before it can destroy humanity. Yeah, that's right. In a last-ditch effort to save us from ourselves, a cult of cannibalistic giant lizard worshippers, named the Church of the Holy Lizard, sent as many monsters as there are players back in time and froze them. The intention was for these monsters to free themselves from the ice when humanity needed them most. Holy fucking shit, we are so fucking adorable. Yes. Yes, we are. I just wish we could select one of the other color palettes that are only available if more than one player selects the same monster. After a short demonstration of their current era time machine technology wherein a man's skin is sent back in time, but not the rest of him, the Shepherd of the Holy Lizard explains that the players, as these monsters, were sent back in time in order to cause humanity to immediately prioritize survival instead of reckless destruction of our world. They're stopping the fire by starting another fire and telling everyone to look at their fire. Yeah, that's right. After breaking free from your icy prison, the Shepherd of the Holy Lizard will put you through one of the longest tutorials ever created. Everything he teaches you is preceded and proceeded by the most bonkers exposition that attempts to justify why monsters killing people is different than other things killing people. It's admittedly hilarious dialogue, but it wears thin when every step is a single button press to do an action. Don't worry, the Shepherd will show up several dozen more times to justify why killing 200 people in this level is important, or why destroying all the buildings in this level advances the cause. While you're busy decimating cities, consuming humanity, butt-smashing things, and hurling people into helicopter blades, there is a story occurring in the background. Well, a few stories. Like a business tycoon guy, Richie Horderson, who appears at the beginning arguing with climate scientists about their proven and apparent findings. He shows up a few more times as a person to eventually eat or destroy. There's these aliens who, 60 years ago, visited Earth to find out that, yes, humans have just realized global warming exists. They then mess around with the human skin that was sent to the past by the Church of the Holy Lizard. There's this meta-destroying storyline with the self-insert game developer character making a game about the events occurring in the game. They're attempting to get a game through a board of aggravating executives that demand he make changes to the game that then happen in the game such as suggesting a level where you cuddle kittens, at which point the next level is about cuddling kittens. As well as this strange part that focuses in on a single family of a mother and son, and the player is faced with the moral choice of consuming the child, thereby sparing him of the eventual doom of the world, or not doing that. It's a very odd and out of nowhere turn of the story that never has an effect on anything else afterward. These oddities occur throughout the game and act like homework you gotta do in the middle of your city destroying. Andy, James, it's time to do your homework about how we're burning down our world and we can only do so much about it. Aw oh, man, I hate doing homework in the middle of destroying our city. Paired with the several jumps forward and backward in time, and the several vehicles you take over for very little reason, the story in this game is kind of a mess. But you didn't come here for the story. You came for the Rampage equivalent destruction, right? Well, there's a lot of that. You'll climb and destroy buildings, eat people and throw them at each other, kick things and climb on airborne vehicles to steer them off course and crash them. You can even butt slam to create more damage and each monster comes paired with their own super ability. Hemosaurus gains a destructive aura that will burn things and send out fiery projectiles. Salamandra breathes fiery breath that will destroy anything in its wake. Clock Sloth sends out a destructive pulse that slows down time, breaks things, and gives you a headache. Autonomous Hemosaurus, meal of a name, shoots missiles that are difficult to control 
control. Each monster has a special meter and an HP meter. Both are denoted at the top of the screen. Fill your green HP meter by eating people, specifically these pudgy acolytes that heal you completely and fill your purple special meter. Fill that meter by destroying things. This white notch on the bar indicates how far it has to fill before you can use your special attack. There's also a point value above each player's HP bar. We're not sure if it matters. The number below your monster's portrait is the amount of lives you have left. Sometimes more indicators will appear on screen denoting level-specific things to do, such as destroying a minimum amount of the city, or squishing a minimum amount of people. When you're done doing the destructive deed, just go all the way to the right and vibrate until other players are ready. If ever you get a little tired of the same old building belittlement, there are rare levels with new mechanics in them. Like this trampoline level that lets you bounce super high, or this metal orb level that's just an indestructible kickable sphere that helps you destroy things. Or this kick the polluter minigame. The church members set some polluters on fire and ask their monster overlords to kick them as many times as possible. Then you just have a grand old time. There are a handful of concepts like these that appear rarely, then disappear, and are no longer available outside of story mode. Even arcade mode never sees the these mechanics reappear. Arcade mode is just all the left to right levels in a jumbled order, varied difficulty, and nothing else. The trampolines, other vehicles of destruction, and metal sphere never show up again. I can't believe how similar and look. Almost like they're nearly identical in this game. That's because they are! Once you've seen one level, you've seen them all. Terror of Hemosaurus is a fun game. When it's not addled by over-explanatory dialogue about how doomed the world is, how heartless the rich are, and how creatively bankrupt executives can be, it's a fun game. Buildings will bend and snap in honor of your great strength and excellence, and the chaos that erupts is just as fun to watch. A lot of work clearly went into the physics of this game as you watch buildings attempt to stay standing like a Jenga tower holding on for dear life, even while you and your friends are butt-smashing and throwing people at each other. It has a nearly infinite gameplay loop, and we can only only imagine what kind of craziness occurs in a four-player game. This is a fun game with several messages it wants to get across to the player while they're destroying everything in sight, and it can get kind of annoying after a bit. Sticking with it will pay off as you get to break everything in every level and destroy humanity the way it was meant to be destroyed. By your hands. Rawr, I'm stomping on you. Goodbye, car. Fuck you, building. Goodbye, bed. No, no, Jumping, please, butt my child. Smash. I don't care. I'm, a lawyer. I'm eating you then. <laughs> I'm a creative. I'm saving <laughs> you then. Call in the military. Oh no, helicopter. I am the military. I'm back with snacks. <laughs> 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 